Well, it's crunch time for Greece as the IMF debt looms and their bailout is coming to an end. Puerto Rico has announced that they too are in the same position and a new chart is showing that the U.S. itself is on that same debt path. Now, this is a projection coming from the Congressional Budget Office and it's showing that a quarter century ago, Greek debt levels were roughly 75% of their economy. It's about equal to what the U.S. has now. As of 2014, Greek debt levels were about 177% of the national GDP. Well, in 25 years, U.S. debt levels are projected to reach 156% of the economy. That's what Greece had in 2012. We can see how that played out. Basically, if Congress leaves the federal budget on autopilot, debt levels will soar, and we are going to be experiencing a Greek-style meltdown of our own. So fantastic here as Obama continually says, oh, raising the debt level isn't going to increase the debt. You know, total doublespeak there. Now, author and journalist Nomi Prince was on the Alex Jones show today, and it reminded us that we actually have a really hard-hitting interview with her from 2013. We interviewed her for Obama Deception 2, which we still haven't gotten around to putting out. Alex has promised we are going to release that film in its, entire, in its entirety, as well as a lot of the hard-hitting interviews that we have uh, there. But here we're gonna play a little snippet from our interview with Nomi Prince, where she's basically discussing the hidden alliances uh, driving American power and how what we're witnessing in the economy today is just a part of that whole bankster's plan. Now, let me just give you a little background on Nomi Prince. She has worked as a managing director at Goldman Sachs. She was a senior managing director at Bear Stearns. Uh, she's worked as a senior strategist at Lehman Brothers, and she was an analyst at the Chase Manhattan Bank. She's well known for her book, All the President's Bankers, in which she explores over a century of the close relationships between 19 presidents and their bankers, and also her really famous whistleblower book, It Takes a Pillage, where uh, behind the bonuses, bailouts, and backroom deals from Washington to Wall Street. So she is the real deal. Check out her interview with Alex Jones on the Alex Jones radio show today on YouTube. Uh, but here is just a little snippet from her 2013 interview, Obama Deception 2, uh, where she's breaking down the hidden hands that are controlling the banking system. The world's private bankers have been able to do the major key bankers that run the largest global banks in the world that emanate from the United States have been able to act above the law to get legal structures to support them in that act, to not be elected by us, and therefore not to be accountable to us as a population. They effectively control the global economy because they control the financial system. And today, more than any other time in history, the amounts that they control, the sheer volume of different kinds of securities, of derivatives, the speed at which money and those securities flits about the world is so much greater than it ever was historically that their power has also become that much greater. Since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913 and, and came into being in 1914 to give these bankers an additional um, flotation for their risky activities. That risk has taken 100 years to get to the point where it is so vast um, that, that it's able to really bring down not just individual countries like it has done in the past, but also the entire world economy. The way in which these bankers manipulate the system is through the alliances that they create with the individuals that run the governments. So we think we're electing people to jurisdict over populations. We, we go to vote for them, we go to polls, we, we discuss their different policies, but really these bankers don't care about any of that. The only thing they care about is to continue to operate in a way that's unregulated and unbothered by whatever government's in power. So they are indifferent. Um, to whether it's a democratic government or whether it's a republican government, they don't care. They will ally with whichever leader 
in whichever party they believe will most be out of their way so that they can consolidate their power. They have chosen a financial route to that influence and that power and that control over the world as opposed to a democratic route. They don't get elected, they get appointed. They don't have to vet their opinions in public. They get to work their way up the ladders of their banks, and it is warfare in those places in order to get the positions on top of their banks that are then on top of the financial world. And in that respect, they not only are above the law, they're, they're, they're really above the world. Because these bankers aren't elected, they're not in public positions, they just happen to control multinational financial firms that operate everywhere and can find the places in the world that have the most favorable tax regimes or regulatory regimes or won't trace the money or the profits that they're putting into those individual countries. They're able to operate expansively and at the same time behind the scenes of the global economy. And because they are not accountable to what's happening outside, because they consider themselves private institutions, even though they, they are multinational firms that supersede local nationalized governments, they're able to continue to operate above the law. Um, and, and not to really worry about whether that law is, is a legislative um, entity from one country or whether it is based on regulations that jurisdict over banking in another country or taxation or how derivatives are accounted for on their books because they can move themselves around. They have branches everywhere. Um, and since particularly uh, the late 1940s when the IMF and the World Bank were established, it's actually given them even more power because now they have a multinational force whereby the governments provide money to the multinational entities like the IMF and the World Bank, but it's the private banks that have to sell their bonds. So the private banks can tell an entity like the World Bank, I don't want you to give aid to this country unless they do these austerity measures because you know what? Our investors won't like the bonds that you create to give those people that loan and we're not going to be able to sell them. If we can't sell them, you can't help them. And that's literally the agreements that were made in the late 1940s when these entities were established. From there, the bankers have been able to operate not just their private institutions within a country, not just taking the deposits of the population, but they also take the international community's largesse to the rest of the world and manipulate it in such a way that they can control where money goes, particularly when there's an economic situation that is most undesirable to any individual country. They can go in and say, well, no, if this country doesn't do what they say, we're not going to be able to raise money for them. And in that way, they really control without being elected anywhere. As much as people may think it's the governments or the central banks or the multinational entities like the World Bank and the IMF running and making decisions about economies around the globe, it is really the private bankers because it is on their say-so that these entities operate. It is on their say-so that the World Bank might give out a loan to a particular developing country because if they don't want that loan to happen, they will say they can't sell the bonds associated with that loan and it won't happen. This has been going on since the late 40s and these entities were established. If you throw into that the fact that in more recent history, something like our Federal Reserve has seen fit to bloat its books by $3 trillion to sustain the last set of mega fraud and toxic asset creation that our private banks did in the last four or five years, you see how their power is subsidized by the governments and the multinationals and the central banks throughout the world. If you have so much power in play underneath, for example, J.P. Morgan Chase, you can do anything. You are already present anywhere and you have the power to dictate what these governments do from an economic standpoint. 
these private bankers don't just act as a shadow government in the United States. They act as a global shadow government throughout the entire world. They don't have to be accountable to individual countries' laws because they can be anywhere. They don't have to worry about what might happen to major losses they might incur because some governments somewhere will support them. So though they are unelected, though they are unaccountable, because they operate in the manner they do in the places throughout the world that they can get to, they are effectively the world's unelected government. They are a global financial entity that is in control or substantially influences our economy every single day.